<laughs> What's good, Polytopians? It's the Big Bird, and welcome back to another Polytopia Replay Breakdown. And this one, we have a really fun one for you. Have you ever had your mind bent? Let's get this game started. We have myself, the Big Burr, in the west side of the map as Zing Z, and we have Stride and Spark spawn into the north as Kiku. So I get the scout in the mountain, and I see his city immediately to the north. He doesn't see me yet, and but he does see a ruin. I go ahead and hop in that center village. He hops on the ruin. I take the village to the south as well, take a workshop, capture the center city. And he goes and he gets a swordsman from that ruin. And that swordsman is really bad news for me because I only have two warriors right now. Uh, I was being greedy, didn't make a lot of units to start this game, but already on turn four, he has a <laughs> veteran swordsman and a warrior in the middle of the map, which I'm gonna see here as I hop into that mountain and I have my other warrior go ahead and decide to upgrade that base and get another workshop. He goes ahead, moves in, captures that village with, with ease. So now I'm on the lookout. I need to find other cities to capture moving my units around he takes that middle control very early with that excellent veteran swordsman from the ruin and i find a ruin to my own so hopefully i get something good from it upgrading the base taking resources he moves to the center it's a nice little scout on me i am now putting in, putting in some work getting eliminated as many units as possible i don't want to get overrun here and we're battling we're battling in the middle he gets an early port and he is going to almost have enough for a giant and from this other ruin i get meditation and meditation gives you a second tier upgrade on the way to philosophy which philosophy can be a very very powerful powerful tool with those mind benders with the ability to heal and convert other enemy units into your own as well as making every single upgrade in the game 33% cheaper and everybody likes to sell so drop in the comments how often do you go philosophy do you get philosophy only if you get meditation from a ruin or do you actually work philosophy into part of your game plan depending on the flow of the game go ahead and drop that in the comments below unfortunately this is not a village for me it's a village surrounded by water and i have no port access on this side unless i upgrade this base uh, and get border growth and then get a port so it's gonna be a while before i can do that okay let me upgrade my capital get some more money some more resources coming in and on his side of the map he's starting to move out with these ships and i, I think he's thinking hey overrun him here because i have this veteran swordsman he knows my capital is most likely in this area and he's probably thinking hey if i run ships up here attack with the veteran swordsman build some more units behind it get a giant out like i said it's not looking too good for me to start this game he goes ahead and he has a giant out already on turn nine and then he's upgrading that middle base and gets a city wall in the middle and that's gonna make it even tougher he must have watched my last video y'all that was an excellent choice to go with the city wall to make this pretty much impossible for me to take early in this game so realize he has ships early so i get a nice scout up north start to upgrade my bases my cities whatever you want to call them in the middle of the map he sees my capital with that attack and he also sees this village down here i'm in a really bad spot he has four cities and i only have two and i'm surrounded on all sides it's water up here which he already has boats in there he has the center of the map with a city wall and he's about to have this village here surrounded by water ah yeah it's not not a good spot for your boy now since i got meditation from that ruin i decide why not why why not get philosophy and i get a mind bender he is going to attack now he's moving into the middle of the map with that giant and i move the mind bender back i leave his base open trying to set up a trap so he puts the giant in the mountain moving along attacking my base down here and it's two versus four after he captures this center city with a bunch of fish around and quickly upgrades that he's moving forward with the with the ships good thing i slid that mind bender back he can't see it with the with the scout goes ahead and upgrades this base he's upgrading his city in the back as well he's attacking he he's just he's all over the place has me completely surrounded and these archers gotta go crazy for me and i also unlock mathematics to get some catapults to help deal with these giants and honestly these mom benders this mom bender is clutch because it prevents his giant from attacking here or attacking there because all i'm gonna do is convert that the next turn so 
This mind bender is, is is a strong trap unit and I'm using it effectively right now. But there's only so much the mind bender can do. As you can see, he is all over the place. He has boats and ships coming around this way. Middle of the base, he's strong defensively with that giant and city wall behind it. And he also has this city over here. And uh, I'm sneaking around trying to find some more villages on the map, but uh, I, I don't see any, I don't see any. <laughs> moving putting in some work with these archers move my other mind bender up to just have some insurance with that trap and at the end of that turn i was able to heal that warrior as well he attacks and he is moving up playing aggressive and he takes out my veteran swordsman upgrading his base up to the northeast taking population there i go ahead and use the mind benders to convert Ha ha! You've unactivated my trap card. So the mind benders getting there, getting there, getting my money's worth. Using that catapult, gr drop some forges here, upgrade both my bases, expand, take border growth at both. Moving in, trying to trying to snipe my mind bender. I don't like that. I don't like that. Playing really pesky right now. Moving into the mountains over here, and actually he doesn't see this unit I have over here on the side of the map. It's just outside of his vision, which is which is pretty clutch for me because if he saw that unit he probably would have you know sent some ships over there to kill it but he actually does not see that warrior sneaking around the outside of the map so he probably doesn't think i even know this is over here. crazy crazy fortunate there for me uh so he's moving that giant back realizing i've whittled it down quite a bit attacking my new warriors attacking with my archers moving that mind bender back so he doesn't get sniped again using my mind bender to heal and these right now these mind benders in a game that seem lost these mind benders are keeping me in the the battle for for quite a bit of time i'm not i'm not winning by any means we can do a quick score check i'm only down by 300 points to be on four bases versus two and only be down 300 points on a tiny map these mind benders are are really the only thing that's that's keeping me in this game so moving in he snipes my catapult with that ship unfortunately gets another super unit oh my just just moving in but again he won't take my capital because that mom bender is just going to convert any unit he puts into the capital so moving my mom benders back don't want them to get sniped because i realize they're my most important unit right now as crazy as that sound trying to get them him away from my capital upgrading getting a super unit using that gate of power uh using another monument park of fortune to get another super unit is as crazy as that sounds that actually puts me in first place by 700 points so even even on two bases versus four, I'm actually in the lead right now. But you know, it's a difference between being in the lead with points and actually being in the lead, like position, army, you know, strength, economy. So even though points wise, I'm technically in first, I would trade places with Stroud and Spark in a second here. He has his archers of his own putting in yep. work. Archers are such a, a underrated unit. I feel like they could really add a lot of value to your army in the in the short to the mid part of the game, defensively and offensively, chipping away at that health and allowing your other units to do big damage. And drop in the comments below, what is your most underrated unit? What's a unit you like to go for? I'm, I'm seeing a lot here. I'm seeing the mind benders is not a unit you typically see. The archers, I think, are an underrated unit. Uh, so those would be two for me. But for you, what what are some units you think are really underrated? Or what's a unit that you like to use in probably a creative way uh, that may not be how that unit is typically used as actually an underrated strategy for that unit? So if that makes sense, drop it in the comments below. He is being pesky with these boats along my shore. I'm putting in some work with my archers and catapult. Got some swordsmen out now. And I'm thinking push this middle base. If I can take this center base, I can take back control of this game. But of course, being a savvy player he is, he's not gonna allow that. He takes population and he gets a warrior smartly and then gets a giant. And if you notice what he did there, before he got, he got the population growth, right? But before he made the giant, he squeezed out another warrior. Uh, so very, very smart move there in the center of the map and just makes him a little bit even stronger. And he's just being pesky, being pesky with those archers. Already bringing that giant down to 28 health and that ship makes it 23. So those little units, those that damage adds up, man. I'm attacking the center base with those giants, but that city wall, uh-oh. 
found a I found a little hidden village up here to the north and I go ahead and take that and right now I'm thinking okay this is looking bad there's no guarantee I'll take this middle base he has a giant outside of my second really my only expansion outside of my capital but now I have three bases and I'm hoping he does not see this up here to the east but he does he sees the corner of the new border oh my if one block if he had not scouted that one block i could have really done some damage here but he does see it and he's attacking using those pesky archers whittling down my giant and my swordsman taking them out getting a defender in the middle with the city wall that's gonna be a pain to break i probably should have moved this catapult up a little sooner it could provide some deterrence to to this base up here using that catapult weakening the giant and also he moved he sees that base so he moves the giant this way which is just unfortunate fortunate for me and he's just whittling down my other giants so i pretty much wasted those two giants i probably if i was playing a little smarter i shouldn't have pushed right away with those giants i should have realized again don't attack into a city wall should have learned from my last video y'all should check that out and he is moving that giant to this city over here working it he has a battleship now yes <laughs> all kinds of stuff go ahead and get a super unit out here and moving along take out that battleship that is huge because that could have been really annoying i scoot this giant back uh try to heal him up with my mind benders and but he is not gonna allow that to happen he takes it out with those pesky pesky archers um but i am able to not take out that giant but weaken it to eight and using those mind benders to heal once again getting another super unit thankfully and yeah this is this is tough this is really tough using those archers using that rider with the archers and the giant he's able to capture this this base and even though this won't hold it still weakens my economy which at this point i only have three bases what is all the way over here i can't afford weakening my economy so very smart move by him moving ahead moving these archers up attacking 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 so I'm able to, to take this back, upgrade my capital, get another super unit. Now imagine if I had four super units right now, if I didn't waste those two attacking into that city wall, I could have just pulled them back and kind of just held on to them. And that, that's another thing too. You don't always have to just make a unit and send it right to the battle line. Sometimes it actually makes sense. Move that unit back or just use it for defense for a little bit and build up a strong attack while you know your opponent won't be able to break your de defense. So that's probably Probably what I should have done played a little more defensive with those two early giants but I was just excited I was still in the game at this point by the end of this turn I'm bringing 21 stars per turn and he's only at 25 so I'm keeping up pretty well economy wise given I had less bases for the entirety of this game being pesky with those ships and archers using archers on my own and I finally get well in looking back at this I probably should have went navigation a little sooner because if I had, especially with those uh, giants, if I made a couple 40 battleships, even though my economy was limited, it would have been hard for me to get there. But more and more catapults too. I should have made more catapults. Those are high damage units, which you can get a lot of kills, a lot of value out of. Probably should have made defenders. That could have that could have really helped me out to build like a defensive line and then have catapults behind it. Even though I did a good job of staying in the fight, it's still some better decisions I could have made to maybe even overturn this battle and make it a winnable game for me so looking that's looking back at this replay it's a lot of thing upgrade paths i could have taken i'm um, uh, just being pesky uh, he makes four and kind of diverting his resources so i know he has a stronger economy i know he has more units more bases and than me but he now he has to make a battleship over here now he has to make archers and warriors and swordsmen over here so just being a distraction with this one as i kind of keep attacking into the city wall which isn't the best strategy on the home front and i go ahead and i finally get that center base back from turn four or whatever but will it hold that's the big question so now moving in with the swordsmen moving in with the archers two catapults i didn't know he had two catapults and an archer and he is able to take that back so i pretty much wasted three giants trying to attack into the city wall <laughs> and so he's going to attack with that battleship against my ship and 
Again, more catapults, more more battleships would have probably been a smarter strategy for me. So I'm attacking, just get rid of that battleship, get rid of that. And now I'm like, I got this base to the to the east. I'm putting in some work, even though I'm about to get surrounded here soon. Attack it with that the true weaken that catapult. And probably shouldn't have wasted that swordsman like that, but but hey, it is what it is. And he gets another super unit in the middle, and that is very problematic. Just just putting in work. Just putting just, 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 just putting in work, as you can see now. He's attacking with those catapults. He's attacking, he's clearing out this this distraction to the east. But I'm, I'm around his capital with two big boy battleships and a swordsman. Ooh, ooh. He is approaching my base to the east. I think the jig is up there, <laughs> unless I, I could pull something off. Attacking with the swordsman, finally making a catapult, getting them outside of that. Attacking this capital, limiting that economy, limiting that production. Continuing to attack. I got three battleships up here now, and just, just being annoying. Just really attacking, limiting what he can do on this side of the map. Looking back, this should have probably been my target. This would have been an easier base to capture, especially with that early catapult. And if I got a ship, I could have easily taken this one and had three connected cities and also could have connected it to this village as well. And now look how that would have looked if I had these four villages versus his three. So moving along, putting in some work with the catapults and battleships. And I'm like, hey, now or never, I don't think he has enough to upgrade this base and get a push out, but let's see what he does. He gets a forge. He, get, he grows a forest. And he gets the super unit and that, you know, I, I tried to capture the capital to win the game in a miraculous comeback, but he gets the push out, grows a forest. I, I ain't gonna lie, that made me hot. That made me mad. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty upset with that one. And maybe that was a situation, like I was saying, where just keep being pesky with those battleships. I would have got a lot more value keeping that full health 40 battleship in that water, just attacking, eliminating these units versus going for the win. But hey, hindsight 2020, getting rid of that cloak in the mountains, attacking with the battleships. Don't have enough to get that. He takes this village to the east, my sneaky backdoor village. And I say, you know what? You can have it. I destroy all my my property. And so even though he captures this village, he won't get any stars from it because I destroy all the production around it. Next thing you know, he is moving in with these warriors or with the swordsmen. He's moving cloaks in. He has catapults. Yeah. What doesn't what doesn't this guy have? Upgrading or healing my catapult. Moving in with the battleships, he has a ton of catapults behind this. And I, just, I, I get chivalry here, going for the night, just for like a last minute bitch effort here. Just, just try to do something to, to bring myself back into this game. Get a swordsman up here. Also getting a knight and using these battleships, getting hit by the catapult. He uses the cloak to infiltrate this base. He spreads out his catapults wisely. Um, he's getting cloaks now just to be annoying. <laughs> and uh, I'm attacking with my battleships. I really don't have a good knight chain option here because he has all these swordsmen. And I'm using the knight to kind of clear out some of these units. And I, I, I just say GG at this point. So what a great game, an exciting game, a fun game. My heart was racing the entire time while playing this. Uh, really, really fun game. Maybe this might have been the most fun game I've had in Polytopia. Just the craziness, being down the entire time going for a unique strategy and sometimes when you're down sometimes it's best to do something outside the box something your opponent is not thinking of and in this case it was the mind bender since i got a meditation from that ruin i saw i said hey might as well go for philosophy and those mind benders kept me in the game for a while and honestly with some better choices in the middle to late game, I pro I could have potentially won that game, uh, even though I was in a position where I probably shouldn't have had a chance. I should have lost within like the first 15 turns of the game. But you're never out of it if you if you think creatively. So 
I hope you enjoyed watching this game. A bit of a crazy mind bender meditation philosophy rush gameplay for you. Don't see that every day. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing this one. Shout out Shroud and Spark. Make sure to check out his channel. Uh, I'll drop that somewhere down there. But hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. But if you enjoyed this video, drop a like, comment, subscribe, feedback in the comments. It helps out the channel. Thank you for helping out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.